On Tuesday, March 9th, Dr. Ciotola updated the county commissioners on the COVID-19 pandemic. Well, the good news is the governor opened everything up as of Friday at 5 o'clock in his press conference today. So what do you say? I missed the press conference. So basically, we're going to follow the state's guidelines. Capacity restrictions have been lifted on indoor dining. The issue is still the bars. I mean, there cannot be any standing and food consumption. So, and six foot distancing is still required. If you're not sitting down. Masking down. is still required. If you're not sitting down. Right. Okay. And so six foot distancing, family tables, and the tables obviously have the restaurants have. Now what, what effect this will really have, it's more on outdoor venues, because they've increased the capacity there. Mm -hmm. So there's no 250 restriction as long as it's 50, per, if like it's a tent, it'd be 50% of the occupancy of the tent now. So I think this is the beginning of a process where he's trying to allow the businesses to try and really start pushing product, their activities. And as far as M&T Bank Stadium is concerned and Oriole Park, he's talking 50% capacity. So for ball games, so I think we're starting to see life returning. We have several large events planned here in April and May, which I think this notice tonight that goes into effect on Friday night at 5 p.m. will certainly allow and encourage participation in the boat shows, the sea glass festival and stuff like that, things that are planned for the community. So I'm glad to hear that. Just a, just a quick clarification. Um, in the restaurants, um, no more than tables of six still? They didn't really, we're waiting for the final oh, okay. executive summary okay. of this, but basically I think he's just opened up the, the capacity of all of the indoor dining as well as outdoor dining. Okay. As long as they can still maintain that six foot distancing which is again the issue in a lot okay. of places. So, so tonight, I wanna give you an update since my last trip here, I believe it was in December. Uh -huh. So the slide presentation, the data, I'm gonna give you some updated data on the slide deck, because the slide deck we put together for data up to the 2nd of March. So, let's see if, there you go. Yeah. As you can see, this gives not only Queen Anne County statistics, but the state of Maryland. And I think the important one for everybody to realize is the actual confirmed deaths in Queen Anne County are not 13, but 31 total. 18 of those 31 occurred in our skilled nursing facility. So in essence, we had 13 individuals that were living in the community who succumbed to their comorbidities and COVID. And it also shows what is going on as far as proportion of population vaccinated. As you know, we received our first doses of Moderna, I believe Christmas Eve. And we started vaccinating that last week of December during the Christmas holidays. And we've been progressively vaccinating since then. Unfortunately, as you know, with your efforts and a lot of other people's efforts, we've not been able to truly increase the allocation to the health department. We started off with an allocation of 500 a week, then they cut us back to 300 a week, and one week they cut us back to 200 a week, and this week we got 400. So hopefully, over the next three to four weeks, we will look at allocations of 400 doses of Moderna per week. We did receive some J&J, &J, very limited number of J&J &J vaccine. And we are using the J&J &J for our mobile team that's doing housebound individuals that are truly limited in their ambulatory ability. It makes it much easier to do a single shot instead of having to schedule these 28 day second dose. We're also using it for some of our first responders and public safety who would prefer a single dose J and J as opposed to the Moderna vaccine. We will probably have all of that 
allocation done by the end of next week. So looking at percentage, according to the state, between other entities vaccinating and understand we've had a lot of our citizens go out of county, some to Six Flags, some to Waldorf, some to Anne Arundel County, the Walgreens, the CVSs. Here in Queen Anne, we have the pharmacy at the Safeway, which is doing essentially 20 individuals a day. They are cooperating with us, the health department. We give them 10 names, register those 10 individuals for the Safeway. And we're taking it off our master list of 75 and older. We are dwindling it down. As of today, we're sitting at about 2,200 remaining 75 and older. The other entities that working with vaccination in the county is the two Walgreens, the one in Chester, the one in Centerville. They will not work with us because they're federally funded with their allocation. So I have no access to refer patients to them, but they are seeing on their own. We don't know how much they're getting. Unfortunately, that data is not shared with the local health departments. The state has that data. And when you look at the total number, when we get to a couple of next slides, when you look at the total number of vaccinations for Queen Anne County, state overall, you see that 12,611, that includes not only the health department vaccination, but what Safeway has done, what other individuals have gone out of the county to get vaccinated, and, the, and CVS. CVS in Chester, I talked to the pharmacist, they were still worrying to see how much they were gonna be allocated. CVS in Anne Arundel has done some vaccination on our population. Yes, Commissioner. Quick question. Um, <clears throat> going back to Safeway, they're, they're, they're taking um, folks on our waiting list. Um, we are re referring specific individuals from our waiting list to those 10 appointments per day. Okay, and where's the vaccine for the Safeway injections coming from? The state allocation okay. to them. Okay, it so it's not come coming out, from our coffers. It, it, not came out, it did not come out of ours. Okay, good. So they're working with us with doses that weren't even dedicated. The to state them. helped us with that part. Outstanding. So, yeah. Thank you, Safeway. We got that. Well, thank the pharmacy department, Safeway. Yeah. And Andrea, the pharmacist, was very helpful in getting this set up and working with us. I've adjusted the numbers on the next column, and this is specifically Queen Anne County Department of Health totals. As you see, initially you had 8,262 8, total. Well, we vaccinated 600 and some people yesterday, both first and second dose. And as of now, we have 8,344 total. 4,899 first doses have been administered and 3,445 second dose, okay? As you can see, we started off slow in December, started to ramp up in January, and we ramped up pretty good in February. Uh, and depending on how much allocation we get, I hope to double what we did in February. This gives you a breakdown of what we're doing weekly. And this Friday, we have another <coughs> first dose clinic at Count Island Fire Department. 600 doses have been allocated for that clinic, and it is already filled. Now, we have a standby list. And the way we have a standby list, that little 10 dose vial really has 11 or 12 doses. You gotta be kinda skimpy to get it, but we're getting it. And that can add an additional 50 or 60 people from that clinic that we start making the calls to the standby list, which we've taken off our wish list and call them the day before and then have them start coming in around 10 o'clock. The clinic is running from nine to three, but we'll start bringing in additional first dose people from the standby list, knowing that we have drawn extra vaccine from what we've brought to the clinic. 
when we finish that clinic, I would suspect that we probably will have vaccinated additional 50 people that, were on, that weren't on the list. And that's what we've been able to do with every clinic we've been running. Doc, real quick, um, as far as vaccinations and what were allocated weekly, um, are we still peeling vaccinations off to educators? Yes. Okay. And matter of fact, the educators are some of the priority list on the standby. We call the principals and say, we got 10 more doses. Send us 10 teachers mm -hmm. with 10 staff. And I would say that without looking at the HR Department of the Board of Ed, I don't know exactly how many. I think we're close to 70% of those that wanted the vaccine. But like everything else in life, now more people want the vaccine when they've seen that their friends, neighbors are have okay. not had any major right. growth additions <laughs> or loss of hair. Right. Starts this, like that. This was pre-vaccine. <laughs> <laughs> now, gives you a pretty good breakdown on age. <clears throat> We've done over 2,000 of our 75 and older, but we still have an about additional 2,000 more to go. And I would hope within the next week and a half to ten, two weeks to be able to move into our 65 and older. We are hitting some that are in that 65 and even 60 if they have a specific medical condition that makes them higher risk. I've kind of prioritized those. And our mobile team is going out on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They have done all of the congregate housing all the assisted living facilities, the, D, the DDA have met all of those, and now they're starting to make the home visits to the homebound. So we are technically, when we have enough vaccine, vaccinating five days a week. We did Suttlersville last Wednesday. The plan is to take next week's 400 allocation to Suttlersville on Wednesday. We have another second dose clinic on Monday at Ken Island. But with the fact that I'm only getting 400 and there's no sense in splitting these appointments and these vaccine clinics to small numbers like under 200 makes no logical sense from a logistics standpoint. We're vaccinating, as we did Monday, about 650 people between 9 and 2 with about 14 to 16 staff members. We have six vaccinators. We have a vaccine prepper. We have admin staff doing the registration, IT staff. So this is a fairly large contingent that we're moving to do all this. And I certainly would like to uh, thank County Island Volunteer Fire Department and Suttlersville Volunteer Fire Department for letting us use their halls. Without that, we wouldn't have a space to be able to allow observation of the vaccine recipients for 15 minutes. That's the holdup, because we've got to have a room big enough to do social distancing and observe. And to this point, knock on wood, we've had no adverse reactions at all. This slide gives you essentially what we're looking at total in Queen Anne residents. Now, obviously, people have been coming to us. The links were shared with family members, work, co-workers. So, but you can see that we're pretty much now sticking pretty close to residents of Queen Anne County. Monthly incidents. The numbers that the governor repeated today the 7% positivity rate statewide was 3.4%. Queen Anne has now come down as of today to a positivity percentage of 2.87%. And you look at new case rates, where we were in January and where we are the today, the state average is 12.99. We're sitting at 7.09. So statistically, we've seen a significant decrease in positive cases. Now, the variant. Where do we stand with the variants? Okay. There are three variants 
that are circulating in the state right now. And as of this morning, Queen Anne County, last week we were notified we had two variant positive cases from the UK. We have no additional variants as of this week, but in the state they have not only the UK variant, they have the South African variant and they have the Brazilian variant. So far at this point in time, we've not seen any significant increase in severity of positive cases requiring significant hospitalization or even those individuals that had been vaccinated and then became ill. The two individuals that we have became ill less than two weeks after their second shot. So they were really not covered by immunity because of the fact that they didn't have that two to four week period of time from their first shot. So we, all of the testing that we're doing and we're still doing our drive-through testing on Tuesdays at the health department Chesapeake College is still doing testing on Mondays with Sure Health. And we're averaging now anywhere from 115 to 120 to 150 people. So we've seen the testing volume significantly decrease. And most of that testing was due to people who thought they had been exposed or who had traveled out of state and needed a negative test before they could go back to work or activities. And I think now with the change and the lifting of the travel restriction for out-of-state travel, we may see also a decrease in testing. But as, as I said, and you look at the age group where the percentage of the cases are, the majority is in our middle age group. It's in that 25 to 55 that is the predominance of the cases that we've experienced. And you attribute that mostly because that group is not staying home? No, they're that, working. Let's just say, or they're, wor or, or they're that, working. That's that is the most active group, both in work, because most of this is acquired outside of the home, and then when it is brought into the home, the entire family usually ends up getting it. Mm -hmm. But it's also the most active in other activities, leisure activities and socialization. But that's what we expect. But overall, when you look at the severity of what we faced, looking at the monthly hospitalization, as well as our monthly deaths, and you see what happened in January. We had six deaths in January. But when you think about the fact that total, we had 13 community deaths, I think that Queen Anne County has fared extremely well due to the diligence of our citizens with distancing, staying away from large gatherings, facial coverings, and really being mindful of protecting our senior population. So before you leap away from my favorite, my favorite chart there, hospitalizations, nationally, hospitalizations have gone down from about 95,000 in the country to 44, 3, or something like that, which is to say that in two months, it's declined by 50% or more. Uh, our hospitalizations here were tending to run about eight we were holding about steady at eight for a good bit. What have we got sitting out there now? Six. So that's a little bit less. What do you attribute the decline in hospitalizations nationally to uh, the advent of the vaccine or more? more I think it's a combination. You're having some degree of herd immunity. You're having an effect from the vaccine but I think the monoclonal antibody treatment, which is done as an outpatient for those that are diagnosed within that first couple of days starting the monoclonal antibody treatment, which is essentially outpatient IV treatment and then monitoring them for about four to six hours after they receive it, that has significantly reduced hospitalization. 
What is your anticipation if we've cut hospitalizations in the last six weeks in half? Where are we going to be in April or May? Does that? I hope when we hit April and May, we have zero hospitalizations. But realistically, we may be looking at maybe two, two to three. And that seems to me to be a very highly significant fact because once you get down to that, don't you have this uh, really a, a parallel circumstance to just regular flu? Well, you, you get to a parallel circumstance with anybody with significant respiratory disease. And these are hospitalizations with other comorbidities. These aren't necessarily, I think, sure regional health data dashboard today showed three or four hospitalizations secondary to COVID. So some of these hospitalizations could be for other reasons. Sure. And they may just have a positive COVID test and it's not necessarily COVID related symptomatology. Gotcha. And the other thing you're seeing now is with the reduction, the overall reduction in hospital inpatient activity, you're also seeing normal hospital inpatient activity increase. So the total bed usage in a hospital is now starting to come back to more normal levels. The inpatient surgeries, those patients that are in for medical treatment, cardiac treatment, and stuff like that. So we're starting to see a definite return to a more normal parameter as far as what we're looking at as far as hospital activity. And Shore Regional Health, up to this point in time, we've only had one location for monoclonal antibody treatment, and that was at Peninsula Regional. Shore Regional will have the capability within probably the meeting I had this evening before this meeting was within the next 10 days to two weeks, we will have that capability at Easton and at Chestertown. So we don't have to have our residents go all the way to Salisbury to get their monoclonal antibody treatment. So that's a good thing. And I mean, I think the more we can vaccinate, I think the better off we're all gonna be. May I proceed? Sir? <laughs> Please. And as you can see, the highest propensity for severity of this is our senior population. And this is where essentially the majority of the hospitalizations are occurring, as well as the deaths. This is a pretty good breakdown of age group and total cases. And as you can see, that 45 to 54, sitting at about 16%. And when you look at our zero to 18, and this is what we saw early on and right before the holidays, that zero to 18 was sitting at 15%. We were, that's our childcare, young infants and school age. But since that time, watching our positivity rate for that age group has taken a significant drop to, I think, at this point in time, in that two to five, two to three percent rate. So hopefully spring break will not cause a significant uptick in all of this, but we'll keep an eye on it as we go through this. And I'm glad to see that schools are back and back with the hybrid, the AABB and before we take any further steps with the schools, I would certainly recommend we see how we do with this process before we tender any consideration for going into full return to class. See how, see how the environment is over the next month. So that's it for me. Thank you. Questions? I don't have a question because um talk to you all the time, get lots of information, but I do, um, every chance I get, want to let the public know um, what an amazing job you guys are doing. And the complaints that I hear out there, um, they're not a reflection on the work that you guys are doing. It's just a matter of supply for vaccines. When you only have a couple hundred a week that you're getting, you can only do so much. And what you guys have done is you've got even more out of what you're getting, which is an amazing thing. I, I, I hope people understand that, that, I mean, you're, you're getting more doses out of the allocation than what 
was initially expected. So we're getting more jabs into the arms with a limited supply. I mean, it's the most every, resourceful every you could be. Every drop in that vial to me right. is precious liquid gold. Right. No, I mean, when we say nothing gets wasted, I mean, literally, nothing is getting wasted. And that's a, 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 a tremendous benefit to the citizens of Queen's County. So thank you. Jack? One, one last one from me. Our clinics that we're, we're putting out are staffed with what, nurses from health, or who's mainly there? What I want to know is, the reason I'm asking that, is that something that is going to deplete any department we have, like EMS, over time? Or do you feel confident? I have, I have pulled back the utilization of EMS providers. We still have an EMS presence in, in the area. We have occasional, e when we have a large clinic, we may have one of the paramedics with us to help vaccinate. But right now, when I'm running six vaccinators, that's a combination of health department nurses, clinical nurses, as well as the Maxim nurses, the contracted nurses that we have hired through the health department. All right, so you're happy that we can I'm keep- happy, I'm happy with what, the way things are flowing. We have our admin people, both from the health department, and I must say, our area on aging, and I will put a shout out to Kathy Willis, her staff has been maintaining the call center. And once we developed that wonderful wish list of I want a vaccine, that <laughs> thing hit 29,000 yesterday. And we've worked out a deal with Chris, the state reporting system for medical vaccination. We sent that list to Chris because they will be able to comb through the list and already identify individuals that have received their vaccine. Because what we have found, a lot of the people that we're now calling on that list have already been vaccinated. So we can call that list down from a time progression and management standpoint, it makes it less onerous than trying to go page by page. So. So I'd just like to say on behalf of the public, you know, you've been complimented and thanked a lot, but it goes on, and thank you again. Sir? Anything else? Anything else? All right. Thank you.